Hey friends, it's Brian here and I'm going to be working on Jeep video number 49 on my build project from a salvage Jeep that I'm rebuilding. So that's the Jeep, that's the engine, and that's what we're going to work on today. So we're going to get to the rear main seal and the way we're going to do that is we're going to pull this brace off. These are 19 millimeter um, nuts. So that's what we're going to start with. So let me clamp the camera down. Um, please remember to like the video if you enjoy it and find it useful. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that bell button or the bell link and that will let you know when I um, publish new videos. I organize all my videos by playlists, so you will find uh, all the Jeep related videos under Jeep Build. That's the playlist for this project. And uh, my goal for this is to help out somebody else. So it is a lot easier to do this work with the engine out of the vehicle. So if you have a reason to take the engine out, this is a much easier way to do it. I am doing these by hand because I don't want any surprises. You can download the factory service manual in a variety of places. Uh, I do highly recommend that. It, it makes it much easier to follow the factory uh, procedures. I'm also using a magnetic tray here uh, to place the bolts in. So that's all the bolts removed. So I'm going to pull 
pull this off and set it to the side, and then I'm going to pull this off and set it to the side. All right, so in order to get to our main seal, this has got to come out. So let's see what size these are. I'm going to change gloves, keep grease and trash. So that's 21. So they appear to be 20 millimeter um, sockets. Seventeen. How the fuck do I have a twenty one but not a twenty? There's a 20, it's a 12 point, which is not my preferred uh, socket. Uh, 20 does not fit. Uh, 21 six point, I like that. Not right, so these appear to be metric. I mean standard. Uh, that, that pisses me off to see standard and metric inside the same engine. I would expect everything to be one or the other. Thirteen sixteenths is really close, so that seems like the winner. So we're going to crack these, but not without a, not without a breaker bar. So I will get out a small breaker bar that's two feet long. We'll do it that way. Do not feel even. One was rather difficult, and the other was not. Now, I am going to stab these into cardboard. So that I know exactly where they came from. Thank you. 
bearing looks good no no significant wear of any sort um, I don't see the anaerobic um, sealant so that's probably why it leaked I do want to gauge these, so I'm going to stop and get some pla go get some plastic gauge. Uh, I also want to get a something to clean this up with, um, and I need to go find some uh, other stuff. But um, and I'm you notice I'm holding my fingers over the bearing. I don't want it to drop out and get damaged. so irritating you know this is probably leaking because there's no anaerobic sealant on it and there should be anaerobic sealant on this um, so we're gonna get this cleaned up So, again, I, I want this nice and clean. I'm using acetone on a shop rag type paper towel to just degrease this so I can see kind of what I'm working on. You do not want to use anything abrasive as you can destroy the motor that way. Pretty sure I lost, yeah I did, so a little piece of right, I'll get that later. So, can't quite reach down here and I don't want to turn the engine, so I'm going to... Try and grab that. I'm going to use something longer. Talk about difficult to get. Uh. So I'm going to use some brazing rod to see if I can fish this. You gotta watch for shit like that. That'll fuck up your engine.
right, so I'm not gonna be the only one in this problem where I gotta push this seal out, but I don't have like chopsticks or anything. So I'm using a number two pencil. Most of y'all should have one of those. And what I've done is just broke the tip off. And then I'm gonna use shit that shouldn't have gone down there all right so the wayward piece is over there so I just happen to have a cordless shop vac. And that's what we're gonna do. You know what? Screw it. We will turn the engine over and dump that thing out later. Okay, so, I had to go back and forth a couple times. And now I'm gonna very carefully use some pliers to just lift up on this. It has a metal spring in it, so it is kind of tight. All right, so there is the old seal. That's an easy way to get it out of there, whether you're working right side up or upside down. I'm using my fingernail to get the old gasket sealer off. Okay. So, um, we need to work on the other half of this. So, we're going to I gotta find some place to set this. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a bench vise out here. It's not very pretty. A lot of shit out here that I don't want on my engine, but this is gonna work. So I'm gonna clamp just here and here. See if we can rotate that out. Good. Or rather, good riddance. All right, that is not a precision surface. 
Okay, so the next thing that needs to happen is we need to, again, wipe the dust and the dirt. Look for burrs with your fingernail. If there are burrs, your fingernail will find them and catch on them. I don't feel any burrs. I want to get all the oil and debris out of here. Do not use anything abrasive on this unless you have to. And if you do, it would be emery cloth or 400 grit sandpaper. All right, I don't feel any burst, so I think we're good there. Again, I'm using my fingernail because it's soft and it's not going to do any damage to get all this old material off. This feels like RTV. There should be anaerobic. Um, gasket maker here, but there's not. All right. All right, so I got my new uh, seal. This slot is the seal. So this part here goes towards the back, so it goes like this with the slot in. So I'm going to set that down, and I'll put some gloves on. Alright, so it says if you're going to restart the engine in a couple days to go ahead and use um, oil, but if it's going to be a while to use grease. So I'm putting super lube in here, which is my favorite grease, and it'll be just fine. And I'm actually kind of working some in here, and then I'm going to lubricate the seal itself. And I'm lubricating all sides because, you know, part of the challenge here is we got to get this to go in that slot without damaging it. Because if we damage it, it will leak. And this has a wire in it. It doesn't have a spring. It's, it's very stiff. All right. So that's there. And we've got this really nice little thing here that protects the edge so you don't jam it. So again, the, the crack goes towards the front of the engine, the solid piece doesn't. And the way this goes on is you set this here Be easier to do if there wasn't a shaft here, but and gosh, you know, can you imagine doing this upside down? I mean, this is this is difficult enough. With the engine upside down. This would be a flipping nightmare.
if I was working on my back. All right, there we go. Oops. So my little tool came out. Let's see if we can work it back in. I don't think we can. There we go. Nope, 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 that's not gonna work either. <clears throat> so we're gonna treat. I'm actually gonna try and <clears throat> no, that ain't gonna come out. <clears throat> but we did get it to go back in. Very, very difficult to push. So we're gonna bring the pencil back. Okay. little bit high on this side all right so that's in there I'm gonna throw the pencil away because it's ruined this little plastic thing comes out should have that deeper in there but it still do its job it's just there to protect the edge I'm going to wipe up as much of this as possible for this next stage I've got a little bit of sticking up on both sides. That's exactly what I want. So let me pause this. Okay, so we're gonna prep the other side. Just a little dab of uh, super lube. We're gonna lubricate both sides of the seal. does not take much of this stuff and it lasts forever. And then this just goes in here like this. I'll 
me double check that that's the right direction. Yes, the groove goes towards the bearing, towards the front of the engine. All right, so we've got this in here very nicely. All right. Now for the next part, I want to clean the surfaces before I add anaerobic gasket maker. And I've got oil all over these right now. Felt something crawl on me. I thought maybe it was a mosquito. All right, so I've dabbed acetone on here. And I'm gonna use this to get the oil off while trying to keep it away from the bearings or the bearing and to keep as much of it off of the gasket or seal as possible. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the block. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I'm making sure these are dry. One of the things that I see people do incorrectly is put these on, like when I watch people's videos, they put this on the, um, the cap. The factory service manual says that these need to be on the, the anaerobic gasket maker, which is Loctite 518, goes here. So it goes right here. In fact, there's a little scribe line and it goes here. So this has the consistency of uh, jelly. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. And this was about $6 on Amazon. I really recommend using the right stuff. Um, the factory service mail calls for Mopar gasket maker, but everybody online says 518. I'm gonna dab just a little bit of oil right in here for my assembly. Uh, my local auto parts store was out of assembly lube, so um, that'll have to do you. So I'm gonna do this in two stages as I did last time. Uh, it's headed to 80, but we're gonna take it to 35 first. Snug. Snug.
Okay. Now I happen to have two torque wrenches, so I had one set at 35 and I have the other one set at 80. I'm double check my measurements. double check the rest of these because I don't think the other ones were that tight. Now they're all they all seem to be good. So that's it. That is all there is to replacing the um, rear main seal with the engine out. And this is way easier to do it. We got a little bit of goo on the back. That's okay. That was not there before, so I don't think this was done correctly the last time. And that's probably why it was fucking leaking. You know, you gotta follow the instructions if you want to get the same results. So, uh, all right, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. This is helpful. Um, if you want to see how to check the main bear, or the the connecting rod and the main bearing clearances, I did a separate video on that. That's Jeep number 50. This is Jeep number 49, changing the rear main seal with the engine out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if I've helped you, please let me know. I will link to the parts and tools that I've used, um, and uh, hopefully that'll help somebody.